Here's part two of the advanced rotoscoping tutorial with Mucka. Please note this is a three-part tutorial. Enjoy. Here comes the fun part. So let's turn off the visibility, visibility of all our layers. So just unclick everything. All right. So let's start. So let's start with the rotor work for the bottom wall. So what we're going to need to do is create a shape that cuts out along this line exactly and then comes down all the way to the edge of the composition. This is because we're going to create three, imagine three puzzle pieces. One puzzle piece is going to be this whole section here, another puzzle piece is going to be this section here, and the next puzzle piece is going to be this section here. And the only puzzle piece that's not going to be there is this sky part. Hope that makes sense, but let's start. All right, so go to the beginning of the composition. And let's start creating a new shape. So we take the Create X-Bind Layer tool, and we go from this point here, this is just the bottom wall, to there. Go, Keep going for a bit, zoom out, hold on Z, and drag out, and just make a generous mat, just make a generous shape. All right, right click to close that shape. Let's adjust that a bit. All right, so how does that get attached? We're gonna use that as our mat. So how are we gonna attach that to our, um, our track? Well, you come over here to layer eight, let's rename it, what we just did. So bottom wall mat. Click on that layer that we just made. Come down here to Link to Track, and select the BG, uh, sorry, the bottom wall track, which is what we tracked, the bottom wall here. So select that. Okay. So now, if you scrub through, you'll see that it is perfectly stuck. Okay. Not exactly perfectly, but we're going to have to go through there and adjust it a bit. Okay. So let's zoom in. And the main adjustments that we're going to make, we're just going to make use this little blue handle and pull it back to make that sharp edge. And here we go. Okay. So let's play. And as you can see, it's already uh, the line is already above where it's supposed to be. So let's just drag those two points. So just drag a little selection box over those two points and just drag it down back into place. And you'll see that a new keyframe has been made. So let's just go between those two. Yeah, that's better. So that was on about 16 keyframes. If you weren't using tracking data, you'd have to do that frame by frame by frame by frame. So that's an example of how Mocha helps out because that's one tracking point, uh, one keyframe after 16 frames instead of each frame. So let's keep going. I might slip off again. It looks pretty good still. Still looks good. Ah, here we go. Let's just move that down again. This time it's just this point that needs to be brought down, so just click away, select just that point, bring it down. Okay, let's just check that out, looks good. Yeah, let's go back, keep going forward. Looks good, looks good. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that shape that we've just made. Um, that really simplifies things. You would have had to, okay, altogether, we have 212 frames here in this composition. If you weren't using tracking data, you would have had to manually keyframe that 212 times. This just took us about 30 seconds, if not 20. And um, we've got really nicely rotoscoped shape. So let's zoom out and just make sure that the edges are good at the bottom here. Yeah, it's pretty good. We're going to double up with the other shapes as well. Okay, so that shape's done. It's renamed. Uh, it's already renamed. So let's turn it off. Lock it. Actually, keep it turned on and just turn off these two here. Okay. So now it becomes a bit more tricky. Let's start with the left hand wall here. So let's choose the Create X Blind Layer tool. And let's start down here and let's draw our shape. Okay, so just keep drawing up the wall. The less points you have, the better actually. But it will change as we go along. Alright, and eventually there's another little 
thing. So just estimate that. And then when we get down here, make sure you double over the bottom wall mat. So as you can see, we've doubled over it. And then right click to close that shape. All right, so let's go ahead and rename that. Left wall underscore mat. Cool, click away. So let's click on that layer, left wall mat, and link it to the left wall track. Okay, so now if we scrub through, you'll see that Yes, it does go off at times. Zoom out a bit. Definitely goes off a few times, as you can see there. So what we're gonna do is adjust all of that as we go along. So let's go from the beginning. So my suggestion is every five frames. You see, when rotoscoping gets a bit more complicated, then maybe you can go down to five frames with mock but still you don't have to do the frame by frame by frame process. That we all know and love. All right, so click on left wall mat and press Command A to select all the points. So let's just bring that down where it should be, about there. Okay, let's go ahead and adjust the single points. Use the blue handle to make it rounded or sharp. So now go five frames forward. All right, and zoom in and just inspect it. Make sure everything's still good. It all looks pretty good. And then just keep repeating that process. Every five frames. This one's offline now. That one's good. All right. So I'm not going to bore you guys with this. Just go five every five frames and just adjust the points as you go along. Thing I noticed while I was tracking, um, your shape here might go a bit crazy out here, but as long as it stays, um, as long as the track is solid in here, then it's all good. All right, so I've done with the roto work now. Um, I took about every five frames. So if we click on one of the frames, you'll see about every five, every three sometimes, it just depends. And if we scrub through, sorry, if we um, and if we scrub through, it looks it looks pretty tight. Now, one cool trick you can do is you click on over here mats, then colorize, and click away overlays, and click away yeah, click away overlays. Go to the beginning of the comp and just watch it through. So as you can see, the um, the mat is pretty darn good. It's pretty amazing what Mocha, what Mocha does for you. So I'm going to repeat that process for the right hand side of the wall. Okay, so we've done the left wall mat now. Let's just turn off the little cog wheel and the lock. And let's start with the, uh, the mat for the right hand wall. So let's go to the beginning of the composition. Okay. And let's just zoom in and with the create x spline layer tool, just again, Draw. Okay, and then just be generous again and overlap the bottom map, mat. Alright, so I want to go ahead and come over here and rename that right wall mat. And we're going to come down here with right wall mat selected. Come down here to link to track, right wall track. Okay, now if we play through, you see it's on the wrong perspective. Um, but if we had tracked like we tracked this wall, it would have been a harder track. So it does seem quite off, but because it's moving in such a similar fashion as the wall, it will be easy to rotoscope this. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Zoom in and go five frames forward. One, two, three, four, five. So select all, Apple A, Command A, and just move it into place. And then just go up the line and make sure everything else is in place. Looks pretty good, so click away, and then just adjust it a little bit. In five frames, one, two, three, four, five. Again, Command A, move it into place. Move down the line, 
check everything else. See that's the blue wall behind it, so don't select that wall. One, two, three, four, five. Select all, Command A, just move it back into place. You can make little adjustments as well. Okay, so again, I'm not going to bore you. Just keep going every five frames forward. Okay, so I've finished uh, rotoing that side of the wall now. So all three shapes are done. Let's just uh, lock it and turn off that. And then let's come over here and click on mats and colorize. So, and then overlays. So here we have our rotoed wall building, etc. So let's just play that. And you'll see that it's pretty good. So as long as you follow those steps and go for every five, five frames, you should come out with a really good, um, a really good roto shape like this. All right, so that was part two. Click here for part three.